to parse through here. But long story short, they're like, if you're going to apply that statute to them, why is it not applied to everybody else like Jamal Bowman for pulling the fire alarm? Well, because at the time that those events happened, nobody considered that um, that it should be applied as broadly as as they're doing it now. This is, you know, the Justice Department is operating using this statute um, as the opportunity presents itself. So, um, if you if you look at the statute, and, and I was a prosecutor when when Enron happened and the uh, the documents were destroyed that prompted this statute, it was all designed to keep people from. Um, making sure evidence doesn't get to the fact finder. It wasn't designed for this broad mm -hmm. uh, application. Well, the plain reading of that by any prosecutor would be that it doesn't have this this um, broad effect. But now, when they're when the left is looking for somebody uh, for some way to uh, to turn what what were relatively minor infractions uh, into uh, blown out of proportion 20 year felonies yeah. uh, now they hit on this statute and they and they expand it uh, when nobody even thought it could possibly apply in those situations that right. Justice Gorsuch and Justice Alito were saying yeah but Jacob I mean this wouldn't be the first time that the January 6 people have over prosecuted I mean we were told that you had essentially barged in and broken into the Capitol and you were standing on the house floor screaming and yelling and then they released the videotapes and it turns out you were there being led by the cops and even praying with them yes well what we're talking about here is statutory interpretation and the Solicitor General, I believe is the uh, term, they are basically using this term otherwise and their interpretation of the statute to create a tyrannical dragnet that they can then use to go after their political opponents and save their political allies from prosecution like Bowman or the BLM Antifa rioters mm -hmm. or even the people doing the sit-in at Kavanaugh's swearing in. And this is the weaponization of the executive branch of government and the use of the law to go after people that they believe are a threat to their political aspirations. Yeah, but Bruce, when we see these types of overreaches, it inevitably is like some sort of domino effect. So if this gets struck down as an over-prosecution, how much of the rest of the January 6th defendants, regardless of the charge, how many of those are going to be heavily scrutinized now as well? Well, the, we're, if this is struck down, then the people who are convicted of that particular offense, those sentences are going to go away. But what I'm afraid is going to happen is that anybody who hasn't been prosecuted fully yet, including clients of my own, um, will get the Justice Department will try to make up for losing this charge by going to other charges and trying to hit them harder. And this has been a a program that it was put in place. It started with the impeachment. I said it on the on the floor of the Senate that the reason why we're, we're all here is the Democrats don't want to face Donald yeah. Trump uh, in the election. And it has been one thing after the next, all designed uh, to put fear into those that um, that support Donald Trump and to and to make Donald Trump the leader of the Republican Party to make him unable to answer uh, and and lead the party because of all of these attacks. But this is one continuous attack on Donald Trump and making it so unpleasant and uh, for his allies and yeah. for anybody who wants to be an ally of his that um, the, the Justice Department is putting the fear of God into people. So I'm, what I'm afraid is going to happen is the Supreme Court will strike down this and other They'll charges come. will get magnified. They'll just make more stuff up. Jacob, I got about 30 seconds left. How many people do you know, yourself included, that, that were, were charged under these bogus things, had their lives ruined? Have you been able to piece back your lives after this? Well, no, not really. My life is forever changed. And that's why the defense's closing statement is so important in yesterday's hearing, because he basically illustrated the fact that based on the government's interpretation of this statute, they could, if they wanted to, go after peaceful protesters exercising their First Amendment rights and use this tyrannical dragnet of this statute to yeah. go after people and throw them in prison for 20 years yeah. based on exercising their First Amendment rights. So what we allow the government to do to others, it will most certainly do to us. And that is why the Supreme Court must put the executive branch in yeah. check so that the balance of power can be maintained in the United States of America. Agreed. Bruce, Jacob, appreciate you coming on.